Hello and welcome to this week's episode. I am going to be talking about wounds. I'm going to be talking about A from the A to Z of emotional abuse, which I think is going to be abusive cycles. There are quite a few that come under A. So anyone who hasn't got my book, A is for abandonment. We talk about that. Abuse, abusive cycles. We've also got adrenal fatigue. These are all the things that are knock on from these abusive relationships. Alienation, I'm sure you've experienced that. Anger, avoidance. So that is A in my book of the A to Z of emotional abuse. I'm going to incorporate maybe half of it this week. Welcome to the Mind Fuckery podcast, which is Feedspot's fifth must listen to podcast on emotional abuse. I'm your host Elizabeth and in here we explore areas others are fear to tread. Through my own personal journey I know how much this hurts and how confusing life becomes. So many questions, no closure and no real answers. I've been a woundologist for over 20 years. I'm the unintentional author of Finding Lily, the A to Z of emotional abuse and divorce matters. I help you clear past life wounds, ancestral trauma, and this life wounding. And as the founder of the Inner Healing Sanctuary, I've created Wound Talking, the original wound, and Quantum Glow. I'm on a mission to help educate as many people as I can on the effects of trauma on our lives and our children's lives, and healing the wounds of our mothers and our fathers. It stops here, it stops now, it stops with us. So welcome along for the journey of a lifetime. And as ever, you are very, very welcome. Actually, I've just got back from Morocco and Greece. It was um, completely unexpected ending up in Greece. I wasn't supposed to be there. I am inspired and I am driven and it gives me energy to travel. And part of that came from healing from my relationship. I was stuck in fight, flight, form, freeze. I was looking over my shoulder constantly. I wasn't sure what was going on. I didn't understand it. I was supposed to be the best thing that had ever happened. I was the only person that ever understood him. And then over a process of time, I went in and out of the abusive cycle like I was on a 1400 spin on a washing machine. And the only time I felt at peace was when I was traveling. And it was also a lonely time but I wasn't constantly looking over my shoulder or spotting a car or wondering whether he was close by or not. It took that away because the only person that really knew where I was going was me and my very close family. And so I'm very, very grateful for having that experience and being able to do that, having my family grown up I and actually I gave up my home I lost it I just couldn't keep it on so I wasn't homeless but I was homeless at the time but it gave me the ability to move around a lot more the work that I was doing because I worked different shifts meant that I could take without taking any holiday I could actually take chunks of time off and as I was clearing debts and things like that anything left over I'd squirrel away and then I'd go off and do something maybe for three days maybe for a week one journey I went to France to Italy to Greece and back to the UK and it was exciting and I felt alive and I'm going to explain how this all fits into the abusive cycle so I thought this week I'm going to pull some information from the A to Z of emotional abuse the reason I wrote this I'd written Finding Lily that had fallen out of me on a beach I'm just updating that at the moment with the help of someone I know and the reason I'm updating it is that more information came out about the memory that came up because I knew that I'd cleared the trauma from 26 years earlier I wrote Finding Lily in 2016 it was a story that just fell out of me I was sat on a beach I was on my own I was in Greece was actually with my family and was waiting for my ex-husband I'd gone a week earlier he'd gone into hiding he was avoiding me he wouldn't take phone calls if we I tried to FaceTime him he turned the camera off or he'd turn it round to the journey in the car that he was traveling his behavior was very odd it wasn't something that I was expecting but I knew I was headed down this road anyway I'm sat on the beach this story with this memory popped up and I started to write about it and I thought I'd actually healed this four years earlier. So more recently, 
coming forward a few years, something happened last year. I had this memory, which is even older than the story of finding Lily. It was actually about a friend of mine, a guy I used to work with and what had happened to him. And what had happened to him was then actually playing out in real time in somebody else's life that I knew. And I was like, oh my gosh, actually finding Lily was actually telling me what was going on in my life at the time, the deceit, the affair and various other things that were happening. This is how this story unfolds is that I was trying to process, I really didn't get what was going on. And part of me was, it was such a relief to be out of that relationship, but there was part of me that was attached in some way to it. And I didn't understand that. And this is how I ended up doing what I'm doing and taking what I know about wounds and bring it into this area of emotional abuse. I then ended up writing a second book, which is The A to Z of Emotional Abuse. And I was finding all this information and I find out a word or a term or somebody mentioned something and I'd have to I'd go and look it up. And so in the end, what I thought was like, well, this information isn't in one place. And I actually did it initially as a YouTube channel uh, for my YouTube channel. That I was creating and starting. So I started with the age set of emotional abuse. I wrote an article. I published that on Thrive Global. That got picked up somewhere else and got shared. And then I produced some artwork and I was sharing that on my old Instagram. And my publisher, Finding Lily, reached out and said, I hope this is your new book. So this is how I wrote the A to Z of emotional abuse. Every book I write, I love to put quotes in. And it starts, chapter A starts with a quote from Glennon Doyle. When pain knocks at the door, Wise ones breathe deep and say, come in, sit down with me and don't leave until you've taught me what I need to know. And for me, this is what it's all about, digging deep, going in, asking questions and letting our bodies tell us where that pain comes from. A is for abuse. Oh no, actually, I think the first one's abandonment is, it's abandonment. A is for abandonment. So the definition of abandonment is the action or fact of abandoning or being abandoned. People get abandoned, houses get abandoned, villages get abandoned. And the emotional pain that you're experiencing from being abandoned is from a wound that you were given in childhood. The pain emanates deep within you. It's a mixture or a swirling mass of emotions, which include loneliness, low self-esteem, untruths and withdrawal symptoms. In brackets, see, we're all a bunch of chemicals, close brackets. The abuser's greatest fear is being abandoned and they use various techniques to bond you in the relationship, securing you as a good source of supply to them. Then when they've finished feeding from you, they've sucked the soul out of you like a dementor. They abandon you and you're left wondering what happened. You did everything that you were asked to do and more and you're left desperate for the highs that you received, a shell of your former self. Nothing left and not knowing how to function or who you even are. And this for me was why traveling helped me so much because I felt nothing until that searing pain. And that might be something that you've experienced. And by using the words of Glennon Doyle, it wasn't actually something I've I was using at the time because I found that quote for the book, but it was using the pain in my body to locate what was going on, having honest conversations with myself about what it was and what I was experiencing and what was happening within my body. And you can do the same. And I'm more than happy to help guide you do that. A is also for abuse. And the definition of abuse is to use something to bad effect or for a bad purpose. Perhaps this is the abuse of alcohol or drugs. It is to treat a person or an animal with cruelty or violence. A person in authority can abuse their power. Abuse is to assault someone, to treat them in such a way as to cause damage or harm, or to speak to someone in an insulting and offensive way. Open brackets, see coercive control, close brackets. And we think of abuse mainly as physical, more with the coercive control coming into our world and being opened up. Knowledge is power. Do we now see that abuse is also emotional? And the damage is held within our body. And much like a physical wound where we might have a broken bone or a bruise or something gets dislocated, the emotional trauma is also held in our body. It 
hits us. I remember somebody saying something to me and it was said in a really cruel way and it landed in my body, in my heart. And it really felt as though I was being stabbed. This person who should be nurturing was attacking me and it was really painful, really hurt me. And I held on to that for a long time. Now I hold on to it as a a guidance of where my boundaries are. And A is for abusive cycles. The ongoing rotation of destructive behaviour used to gain power and control over a person. The cycle of abuse is idealisation, devaluation and discard. In the beginning, there was chaos. And I went to write a blog post and put in a search bar in the beginning, thinking that I was going to get some information back on Genesis 1-1 and the creation of heaven and earth. But instead, I was reading about chaos and the gaping emptiness. Perhaps you've experienced the chaos and the emptiness, or you may still be experiencing it at the end of the relationship. Believe me, if you heal these wounds, this will be the best gift you'll ever receive. Out of this chaos comes love, a love you will never have experienced before in your life not the manufactured love. The cycle of abuse is everything. It's the beginning and it's the end. That pain deep within the soul, screaming to be heard, is guiding you to look at the wounds and advising you that now is the time to look at them and heal them. The cycle of abuse is made up of three elements. Idealisation, devaluation and discard. And each element is carried out with precision, for the desired results. The chaos is the destruction left at the end of the relationship. The abuser walks away without a backward glance, having secured in place their next source of supply. You may be at this point trying to understand what happened and you may be trying to label the abuser. Your head is swimming with all the information now out on the big wide web. Your abuser is so empty inside. Once they've sucked out your soul, they leave. You have very possibly experienced idealisation where you were the centre of their world. They told you how amazing you were and showered you with gifts and meals and days out. Over a period of time, this changed. Suddenly, the things they loved about you were turned against you. The words of idealisation became criticisms and put-downs. And this followed by discard. Temporary at first, they always came back with the attention that you, you were used to. You sighed with relief and you may have vowed to yourself that you wouldn't let this happen again. This was a game. You didn't have the rules. There were invisible chains that held you in place. It is now time to dissolve them and to repair the damage and to find out where the original wound comes from. This is the start of a beautiful journey. I've realised reading that, those just those three sections that perhaps an audible book isn't going to be available anytime soon. As I said, I wrote that back in 2018, 2019. I was actually going through my divorce at the time. I was trying to find all this information. I was healing. I was being triggered. I was trying to find out what was going on. And I thought, as I said earlier, you know, I'll pull all this information, but also write from my heart and from my soul, because I know that how painful this is. I experienced extreme trauma. Now looking back, if I'd realised that that was actually a message, an echo from my past, telling me what was really going on behind the scenes that I was sort of aware of, but I wasn't obviously aware of, and desperately trying to hang on to a relationship that I knew it was dead in the water. When I found him on dating websites and talking to people, I should have walked away, but I couldn't walk away. I had commitments and I, I was scared of what my future would look like and how I was going to cope. When I speak about, you know, going back seven or eight times, when I talk about I know that pain, the cycles that I went through, the cycle of abuse, idealization, devaluation and discard, I was going through that cycle on a daily basis. He'd disappear. Uh, it was me and I didn't trust him and it, I had trust issues from other relationships. It wasn't until afterwards that I could, it's like having that conversation. You're going to have a difficult conversation with someone. Uh, if something happens and you walk away and you go, oh, I wish I'd said this. I wish I'd said that. And this all happened afterwards because my brain was had gone into shutdown and it has started to repair. It is repairing. I still feel there are times tiny little bits that have stress left over from what happened and what I experienced. And that is the effect of an emotionally abusive relationship. I was really lucky 
that I had a lot of people surrounding me in the healing environment that I came from because that's what my background is and I was able to reach out to certain people and get them to hold space for me while I healed and I was really really lucky. What I was going to say was I wish I'd realised at the time that the story was an echo because it would have saved me a lot of time. I now believe because I was left with not knowing what happened, not knowing, literally no closure. And then the wounds of what's wrong with me, what did I do wrong? And all of those wounds popped up and they held me. And this is why I say to you, ground, breathe, write out your story and have honest conversations. And these are the things that I teach. These are the things I'm so passionate about because that is the gateway to your healing. The last few weeks I did pre-post some podcasts. I had one interview with uh, Debbie Debonair and then I did a compact package if you haven't heard that one I put in a breathing and a grounding meditation in there so everything was together it's all in one place save it and you can when I need to ground when I need to breathe you can go and quickly find that and that's why I put that one together it, it was because I knew I was going traveling and I wasn't 100% sure whether I'd be able to have time to record it but I'm back and raring to go. I I want to say I'm refreshed, but I don't feel completely refreshed. It's life, isn't it? This is a beautiful, beautiful journey that you're about to embark. It's the journey of a lifetime. And let me just repeat Glennon Doyle's quote. And she says, when pain knocks at the door, wise ones, that's you. You're the wise one. They breathe deep and say, come in, sit down with me and please don't leave until you've taught me what I need to know. Your body has the information, it has all of your wounds held there and now it's my belief this is the time that we've been given, that we've been placed here to heal the wounds of our mothers, the wounds of our fathers, so generational wounds that are coming round. And it's our time to say, it stops here, it stops now, it stops with me. I do not want my children repeating these patterns. I am healing myself, sending you loads and loads of love until next time.